Hello, my name is Paul Rosenblum, and this is an introduction to the SOAR architecture. The purpose of SOAR is to provide an integrated framework for building intelligent agents. In this video, we explain how SOAR uses problem spaces, impasses, and learning to capture goal-oriented behavior. These features will be demonstrated in the context of a specific SOAR system called RailSOAR, whose task is to solve problems in a train switchyard. As an elementary example of the kind of problem RailSOAR solves, imagine a section of railroad track with a siding accessible from only one direction. On the right-hand portion of the track is an engine pushing a flatbed car. And on the left portion of the track is another engine by itself. RailSOAR's task is to move the trains from the starting configuration to a final configuration in which the flatbed is being pulled rather than pushed by its engine. How does RailSOAR do it? Here is the system solution. For RailSOAR to solve this problem and others like it, the task must be represented within SOAR's architectural framework. This means that the problem of reconfiguring trains must be cast in terms of goal-directed behavior in a problem space. To find a solution, RailSOAR must transform its representation of the initial state of the trains into a representation of the desired state of the trains. SOAR transforms the state by applying an operator that changes some part of the current state create a new current state. This process continues operator by operator and current state to new current state until the current state becomes a desired state. When a desired state is reached, the reconfiguration goal has been achieved by that sequence of operators. A problem space is a way of organizing the system's knowledge. In general, Source systems have their knowledge organized across multiple problem spaces. The relationships between the problem spaces are defined by impasses. RailSOAR begins to solve the reconfiguration problem in the switch problem space at the initial state. In switch, four move operators can be applied to this configuration. The single engine can move to the right track. The single engine can move up onto the siding. The coupled engine can decouple and move to the left track, or can take the flatbed with it. Although four move operators are possible, SOAR may choose only one of them. This tie among operators is an impasse that arises because SOAR doesn't know which operator leads to the desired reconfiguration. In general, an impasse arises whenever the system lacks immediately available knowledge about how to proceed. So it responds to an impasse by setting itself the goal of finding knowledge that can resolve the impasse. Rail source knowledge is spread across two types of problem spaces, switch and selection. Switch spaces provide knowledge about how trains move, with states that represent train configurations and operators that move trains from one configuration to the next. Selection spaces, on the other hand, provide search control knowledge with states that represent information about tied moves in switch and operators that evaluate those moves. Thus, selection's initial state contains the four tied unevaluated operators in switch. Selection chooses one of switch's four operators at random and applies an evaluate operator to it. But because selection doesn't know if this move will lead to success or failure, a new impasse arises and SOAR creates for itself the goal of attaining the knowledge to resolve it, choosing a new instance of switch as the place to find the knowledge. In switch two, SOAR applies the selected operator to the initial state, decoupling the engine from the flatbed and moving it to the left of the siding. This new state is still not a desired state, however, so SOAR continues its look ahead search. Since two operators can be applied to switch two's current state, SOAR must, again, choose which path to follow. It does so by using the same impasse structure we have just seen. The tie impasse leads to a new selection space for choosing and evaluating each path. 
followed by a new instance of the switch space to try out the first move. The random choice made in selection two was to move the engine back to the right-hand track. RailSort notices that this choice returns to a state that already exists in an impasse problem space. Returning to a previous state causes the current state to be marked as a failure. This evaluation serves to resolve the impasse in selection two. The resolution of this impasse pushes the look-ahead search down the alternate path. It also gives us our first opportunity to look at how SOAR learns. Remember that an impasse is caused by a lack of knowledge. And notice that when the impasse is resolved, knowledge has become available. This knowledge relates conditions before the impasse to actions that occurred after the impasse. In this instance, RailSOAR examines a previous configuration of the trains the current configuration of the trains, and the operator to be evaluated in order to find an evaluation. Whenever an impasse is resolved, SOAR's learning mechanism automatically stores away a pattern of conditions and their actions. This process is called chunking. In this case, once the pattern has been chunked, its knowledge is available in every selection space. So the next time SOAR is in a similar situation, in a selection space, and wants to evaluate an operator that moves an engine to the right that had just been moved to the left, this chunk will fire, the evaluation will appear, and no impasse will occur. We've just seen how RailSOAR uses problem spaces, impasses, and learning to explore a possible sequence of move operators as it looks for some sequence that leads from the initial state to the desired state. The system continues to problem solve in this way. Its search among sequences of operators, taking the form of a constantly changing hierarchy of alternating switch and selection spaces. Notice that each space has access to chunks built during previous impasse resolutions. Eventually, SOAR reaches the point at which the operator that has impassed in each of the selection spaces corresponds to a move along the solution path. So the state that results from the operator application in switch six is the desired configuration. Reaching the desired state in the bottom most problem space starts a chain of impasse resolutions and chunk creations that bring the look ahead search to a successful conclusion. As each impasse resolves, chunks are added to SOAR's long-term memory. These chunks capture the knowledge needed to prevent that impasse in analogous situations. At last, SOAR has reached the original impasse in the hierarchy. This impasse occurred because RailSOAR did not know which of the four operators that could be applied to the initial state would lead to the desired configuration. The look ahead search has shown that the operator that decouples the engine and moves it left will lead to a solution. So, as the impasse resolves, a chunk is built that captures the preference for that operator, and the operator itself is applied to switch its initial state to create the next state. Now it might seem that after taking the first step down the solution path, SOAR would have to repeat the whole look ahead search to find the next step. But having found the whole solution path during look ahead means that each operator on that path was once applied and evaluated in response to an impasse. So there is a chunk that recognizes this state and selects the operator to make the state transition without search. And there's another chunk that recognizes this state and applies the correct operator to it. In fact, because SOAR learned a pattern of the resolution of each impasse, real SOAR can complete the reconfiguration sequence step by step to the desired state without further search. In this elementary example, real SOAR solved its configuration problem using the switch and selection spaces to organize knowledge into a look ahead search. Impasses in switch occurred because of lack of knowledge about which operators to select. Impasses in selection occurred because of lack of knowledge about how to evaluate candidate operators in switch. These impasses imposed a hierarchical relationship between switch and selection that enabled chunking to transfer the knowledge found during look ahead to the final solution sequence. Although they may use different problem spaces, operators, and search control, other source systems work in much the same way when they lack direct knowledge 